to the stage. Hello again. Um, there are so many amazing things happening at JCC Association, so I feel um, humbled, and it's so wonderful to have the opportunity to put a focus on J-Response over the next hour or so. Um, it is our signature program, our newest signature program, whose own Lech Lecha began about two years ago, but whose work has really picked up speed and steam over the past six months. I'm excited to share and discuss with you where we have been, uh, amplifying some of what Daron said earlier, and what we have learned, as well as our vision for the next two years, how we aim to serve your communities and seeking your advisement along the way. So over the next few minutes, I will share how we articulate the why of J-Response, how we ground J-Response work utilizing the wisdom of Jewish text and tradition, We'll talk about the how of J-Response, highlighting our four pillars, or our four R's. How this work connects to the larger work on talent development, of which you've heard a bit about already, and much more from Brian Schreiber tomorrow. I'm gonna highlight two key components of our work, notably our plan to train staff at every JCC to become J-Responders, and we're gonna do a taste of this training within this hour. And our readiness initiative, engaging every JCC, Jewish Community Center and Jewish Community Camp, to employ the best practices, protocols, and plans to respond to a crisis before one occurs. There'll be a short exercise around readiness in which we will have a short discussion and I'll seek your input. And I'll close by highlighting where we aspire J-Response to be by the end of 2021. So our why. For those of you familiar with Simon Sinek's golden circle work, the why, the how, and the what. So in that spirit, um, I want to identify our aims with J-Response that is about, but also much more than just emergency disaster response. The work of J-Response will allow us to do three things. It will allow us to build bridges in multiple different fashions. It will allow us to elevate talent, all of your talent, that can bring back their skills, not only in a deployment, but in the everyday work of, at their JCC, at your JCCs. And it'll strengthen our communities. When we are connected, we're stronger. When we support each other, we're stronger. And when we're better prepared for crisis, we are stronger. And that's what we hope to have J-Response do now and in the future. Thus, we ensure that all of our actions, our what of J-Response, reflects and strives to meet this broader why, ensuring J-Response aligns and plays an active role in the broader goals of the JCC Association and the JCC, JCC movement. Now, the Jewish canon from our text to our values guide us in this work. The values that I have on this slide are just a sampling of how J-Response is emblematic of our tradition. We are in this work because we are all created in the image of the divine, commanded to be in this work, because we are all responsible for one another and that we want to be of use. Now, if you had an opportunity to read any of the articles from our J-Responders who served in our most recent deployment to Pittsburgh, if not, I'll make sure to share the links with you. A major theme was that our J-Responders simply wanted to be useful to our friends in Pittsburgh, which fulfilled them as much as they may have been helping their peers. But there is also a Jewish text that guides our work that was introduced to me by Dr. David Ackerman and that was resonant amongst our senior leadership, thus I've been sharing with our staff and the board and now all of you, called Pidion Shvaim, Redemption of Captives. And I'd like to ask my friend and colleague, the CEO from Durham Chapel Hill, uh, Jill Madsen, to read this text out loud for us. Oh, thank you. Ignoring the need of the redeemed captives goes against these Torah laws. Do not harden your heart or shut your hand against your needy fellow. Do not stand idly by while your neighbor's blood is shed. And misses out on the following mitzvot. You must surely open your hand to him or her. Love your neighbor as yourself. Rescue those who are drawn to death. 
and there is no mitzvah greater than the redeeming of captives. Thank you, Jill. So there are several times during this hour, in the spirit of doing a little bit of experiential learning, that I'll ask you to engage in conversation. Um, this is just the first. So please find a Hevruta parter, and you will discuss the following. And I'll put the text back up on the screen. There's a couple uh, of, of pieces of paper of this text, just a couple. It's also in your app. But I'll put it back on the screen when I break you up in a minute. What does this text mean to you? And how might this text inform our J response work? Now, there are table facilitators at your table, so if you need any assistance or questions, feel free to go to them, and then I will hopefully get a couple of you to respond out to the group. All right. If we can all come back together. So I have to think of the best way to, to get all you back together, because I'm going to be breaking you up for conversations a few times. Um, as some of you heard me say many times, um, I'll way past longtime song leader of, uh, of Camp Wise of a Jewish summer camp. So I still do, if the hand goes up, the mouth goes shut. I really don't want to do that with this group. That just feels a little condescending. Um, but, um, or if you hear my voice clap once, you know, I have memories of that. So I'll just quietly, quietly shush you and I want you to come back together and I hope you find that okay. So in the spirit of time, let's get two people or two partner groups just to share um, your response to these questions to the text. Um, either or both, what does this text mean to you and how might you think this text could inform our J-Response work? Let's see if we can get two people. Mark. Um, wait, wait, wait. Thank you, Dory. <laughs> the, the video picks it up better. I'm going to actually still hold it out here just to save everyone. Uh, for us, the text really began to ask the question, respond to what? Mm. Um, and, and, and the text might inform the response work to be, um, how do we define that which is what we respond to? Mm. Is it just a natural disaster or to a, a, a major event as opposed to what is our daily response to clothing people and hunger and all of the circumstances of it and, and trying to uh, maybe grow the breadth and depth of what response could mean based on this text recognizing the terms, the thirsty, the hungry, mm -hmm. and the naked, or the, you know, clothing those people. So that was our, our feeling from it. Excellent. Thank you very much, Mark. One more partner group may want to share. I'll share. Um, Thank you, Sue. I, um, I don't, oh, I guess I do. You do. Um, I'm Sue Fox from the Shorefront Y in Brighton Beach, Brooklyn. <laughs> Um, we talked about the responsibility that we have as organizations to be prepared to care for those who have been either somehow victimized, somehow in a place where they are, have been in danger, whether that's through violence, through natural disaster. And as an organization, it is, it is required of us to be able to um, address what has been written in these wise words, that we are thoughtfully prepared for future disasters of any kind, because bad things will happen. But the more you're prepared, the better you're anchored to be responsive and meet this mitzvot. Thank you, Sue, and thank you, Mark, and I think my remarks coming forward will start to address some of those questions and amplify some of what Sue just said. This is what our reflection or my reflection is. The JCC movement is committed to helping our peers who lay captive to trauma. We will provide relief to ease their way out and be a presence to help them recover in both the, sh in both the short and the long term. And we'll use these texts to help guide us in determining what are the disasters, what are the crises, what are the needs that J-Response responds to? Uh, not, I don't think it'll ever be an abundantly clear-cut answer, but we're gonna learn certainly over time. So, a bit of history. 
In 2018, the idea of J-Response was launched in the months after Hurricane Harvey with the idea that the JCC movement's greatest asset is our people. As you've heard, our 6,000 full-time Jewish professionals and 32,000 part-time professionals who could be of service in a disaster or a crisis. That year, we held our first pilot training in Memphis, which commenced our partnership with the humanita humanitarian aid organization, Israel, which we are so pleased to have represented here. 2018 also saw J Response's first deployment to the JCC of Greater Pittsburgh in the weeks after the J Response, uh, weeks after the Tree of Life shooting, to be a presence and provide emotional support to the local staff and community. And 20 J responders went back one year later, just a couple months ago, to be for the JCC um, during the one year commemoration. By 2019, we were presenting J response formally at JCC Professional Conference. And at that time, Daron organized a task force that was also staffed by Jen Mamlet and Brian Schreiber of the JCC Association Board of Directors to determine the contours of J response moving forward. One of their recommendations was to hire a full-time director to lead J response, and I am, of course, very grateful that they made that determination. Here are the other four. We added the work of readiness to the J response mission. More on this and all our four R's in a moment. We decided that at least for this initial time, we will focus on training our professionals to serve as J responders, not yet community members or lay leadership. That we will deploy to JCCs and their communities within North America. And as for international crises, we will work to amplify and encourage the support of Israel and their disaster relief efforts. And finally, affirming that we will respond to any JCC or community camp or their community during their time of need, regardless of affiliation. While training and other J response services may be limited to affiliates, in the event of a crisis, we will be there for any JCC or community. So we now have four R's of J response, and we have visualized these four R's in what I'm calling the J response virtuous cycle. Every action we take under the banner of one R will reinforce the work of the others. For example, helping our JCCs with their readiness to effectively respond to a crisis will help them be more resilient. Similarly, training our staff to provide relief to their peers will help them and their JCC become more ready for the next crisis. Now, we're not engaging in this work alone. We have many partners in this process, including our signature partner, Israel whose partnership we have recently reaffirmed and are excited to move forward with. They'll help us craft our trainings, advise us on future deployments, and we will amplify their continental efforts to educate and advocate for individuals to engage in humanitarian aid relief at our JCCs. And for those of you that didn't have a chance to go to the Israel aid session with Hillel Zand, he'll be here all day, he was incredible, and think about how Israel aid can be um, a meaningful addition to your community um, and JCC program. Now, one of our major goals over the next two years will be to train at least two JCC professionals from each of your JCCs to become J responders. One manner we will do this is to conduct continental trainings in which we invite these professionals for an intense week of training in the four R's with opportunities to learn before and after that week as well. We hope to involve every affiliated agency and we know we would have done our job if the four R's become a key feature of every JCC's culture. So in a moment, I'll share a bit more of what we have planned for these trainings, but would first like to invite you into the conversation. At your tables, we have a member of the JCC Association team to help facilitate and take notes. So we want you to share, before we tell you what we have in mind and what we have in store, what you would like your JCC professionals to learn in a J response training. We'll give you five minutes to discuss. No answers right or wrong, but we just want your general ideas, what comes to mind. And I'll ask a couple of tables to share out their thoughts before we move ahead. And all of the notes that are taken will be submitted uh, to me and our team to incorporate as we finalize our training programs for the next years. So at your tables, what would you like your professionals to learn based on your experiences and your interest in J response? So I apologize for pausing you in your conversations, but if you can just put a pause on where you are. 
Uh, and again, all of the notes from all these conversations are going to be submitted and we're going to be looking at all of them. But would love just to get one, maybe two tables to share one or two ideas that came to mind, just so the whole group, the whole room can get a flavor of what was discussed. So I will see if there is, can you hear me, Jesse? Um, if there's one table or two tables that can share, it could be the table facilitator or one of the execs can share one of the things you discussed. Yeah. Leia. We had a lot of different ideas, but the first thing that we heard is uh, to train uh, to be incredible listeners, to acknowledge the fact that people need help in processing the experience and people just need to learn how to listen. Um, one other thing is that some people may want to do what they know or skilled in doing, but they need to learn how to do what is needed, mm -hmm. not necessarily what they want to do. So that's also, um, uh, we had other ideas, but I'll allow other people to share. Yeah, that's amazing. Thank you. Thank you to you and your table. Back there. Thank you. We had some questions about what's the right type of staff to send to the training. Not really quite clear on what the pathway is forward. So is this mm -hmm. something where staff will be learning how to develop a plan for their community or in that train the trainer model? Is mm -hmm. it what is the parameters of that? So how can we choose the best person to apply for the role? So I'm going to answer a lot of that in the next slide, and whatever I don't answer, I want to talk to you about as well offline. But I will say in a sentence that we want this training to be open to any JCC professional um, on your staff, regardless of whether they work in facilities or early childhood or program. Anyone that wants to step up to say, he nanny, here I am, as we're calling our our training experience, should be eligible. So those that are passionate, those that want to serve, um, would be among those individuals, and I'll speak in a minute about what the contours of the training will be to help you decide that a bit further. One more? We'll do one more. A really important part that was brought up was having someone who can do crisis communication, marketing, PR, and I was at the Federation in San Diego during Poway, and one of the most valuable resources was having the National Crisis Communications Manager there so that we could do everything else that we needed to do. Great. And as Mark said, it's often difficult when a team comes in because you feel like you need to overextend hospitality mm -hmm. and that distracts from what you need to be doing. Great. Um, and to your last point, I want to highlight the wonderful people at the Jewish community of Pittsburgh, uh, specifically people on Brian's staff, including Alexis Mancuso, because it takes a lot of work for a community that's already in crisis to then accept J responders. And what we want to do is relieve that burden as much as possible, knowing that there is still some work there. Um, and I appreciate all your other comments as well. And we'll be. Um, evaluating and iterating throughout this entire time of developing these trainings. So everything that you just mentioned at all of your tables will be incorporated and reflected on. Um, but this will be a, a lot of what the training will be, what your professionals will learn, our plans. They're going to learn the basic understandings of disaster management response. What is it? What does it look like? What can it look like in different situations? Again, rooting our values and our texts and our traditions into the discussion to provide a foundation, how to provide effective relief in the weeks and months thereafter, how can they use the skills they already have, and how can they learn more skills, including the listening um, and being an emotional presence, which we'll get a taste of in a moment. Exercises and strategies for self-care and building resilience. We recognize that the individuals that will be deployed will be going into a place of trauma, and they will then potentially experience and feel a little of trauma. So how can we make sure that those that we train as J responders know how to take care of themselves and stay healthy and resilient? The best practices and tools in readiness, which we'll talk a little more about a little later on. And then to a degree we can do it in an initial training and then exploring how we can do this in further train the trainer type trainings. Uh, facilitation and reflection skills, because we want the, J, the JCC professionals who come to our trainings to own this to the point where they can then share it um, with all of their peers at their JCCs. So starting the and facilitation and reflection discussion and then continuing it in future trainings. But for a moment or two, we'd love to give you a taste of what we're planning and go a bit deeper. Much of the work of relief and recovery is for our J responders when deployed to provide trauma first aid. 
what the National Mental Health Council calls mental health first aid, or what ISRA aid calls psychological first aid. Now on this slide, we have from the National Mental Health Council the acronym ALGI, to approach, to listen non-judgmentally, to give reassurance and information, to encourage appropriate professional help, and to encourage self-help and other support strategies. To be that point of contact, if they see somebody who might be experiencing distress, just to approach and listen non-judgmentally and then get that person to a more licensed and certified professional. ISRAID characterizes it similarly, and I wanna pay close attention to the three bullet points that just came on the screen. How can RJ responders, whatever they might be doing, whether they might be taking care of the pool while the other aquatics director needs time off, or whether they are helping at a distribution center if they're there early on in a crisis, how can their work restore feelings of safety, reduce stress, and regulate emotions to the staff and to the broader community? We hope in however small way, when 20 of us in this room head to the Aaron Family JCC in Dallas on Wednesday, handing out breakfast and having informal discussions with the staff, we can do just that. So what does this look like? I'm going to ask Marshall Curland, uh, the CEO in Stanford, to read this slide for us. Psychological first aid dues. List the people who wish to share their stories and emotions. Provide practical suggestions on how people can help themselves. Help people regain their sense of control by engaging them in activities to meet their own needs. Acknowledge and support a survivor's strength, competence, courage, and power. Allow people to determine the kind of assistance they want to receive and the pace of self-disclosure. Enable person to have safety, belonging, and agency. Say, I'm here with you, what might you need? And understanding what we should be doing in a deployment, we also need to be trained on what to avoid. So I'll ask Adam Chaskin uh, from Jacksonville to read this slide out for us. Don't force people to share their stories. Don't give them simple reassurance such as everything will be all right, or at least you survived, or I know how you feel. Don't tell people what they should be feeling, thinking, or doing. Don't tell people how they should have acted earlier. Don't make promises that cannot be kept. And don't criticize existing services or relief recovery activities in front of people in need of these activities and services. Thank you, Adam, and thank you, Marshall. By following these do's and don'ts, we hope our J responders can help our peers in distress reach a point of what is called post-traumatic growth which you can see on this slide as an, and is expressed in these five factors. It's not unlike what we talked about in, this opening, in our opening text study. Our peers affected by trauma may have a yearning to, I'm a big Beatles fan, as Paul McCartney eloquently saying, get back to where you once belonged, a time before the disaster has happened. We know that's not possible. We can't go back to before the tornado, before the hurricane, before the shooting. But what our J responders can help play a role in doing is how can we play a, role to help, play a role to help our peers arrive at a new healthy place. That's perhaps our most important role as we deploy and care for communities in need. And again, I went through these slides in a matter of a minute or two. This is what we'll be working on for many hours during our trainings. So on that note, a bit of practice. Warning that this might feel awkward, or it might not. That is the point. I'd like you to turn to a partner and practice saying the following to them and practice listening the words being said to you. Those words are, I'm here with you, or I'm here, or I'm here with you, what might you need? Some kind of combi combination of that. You don't have to actually answer the question. You can if you want, but the goal here is just to practice saying words that express empathy and care without expressing judgment or sharing your own story that might not relate to theirs. Try it, and then share with your partner how that felt to say it and hear it. Take three minutes, find a partner, try the exercise, and then I'll bring you back together. I was doing, uh, I had a friendly bet with my wife. 
who's a rabbi who's done clinical and pastoral education, whether I can get 80 plus execs in a room, uh, CEOs of big agencies to sit next to each other and just say, I'm here with you, what might you need? So if you did the exercise, wonderful. If you chose to have a meaningful conversation with your partner, that's also wonderful. Um, but to Leah's point earlier, um, we know that our JCC professionals that are gonna be J responders or that will deploy will already have a wonderful amount of skills and we'll want a diverse breadth of them. We're gonna need facility directors and wellness people and early childhood directors. You never know what the crisis is gonna need. But we know that every single J responder is gonna to need to be comfortable being in conversations with people that are experiencing trauma. We wanna be able to help reduce the possibility that they'll develop post-traumatic stress disorder and by having the skills, by practicing these questions, which we will do, we will model for them in trainings, we will do it many times, we'll be able to build what are probably already very empathetic people, but we'll build this skill set so we have confidence that when our J responders do need to deploy, and we hope never have to deploy, but when and if they do, that they will be comfortable having these conversations and to express empathy. So there's a little taste of what many of you are, hopefully all of your staff at some point will be doing in our trainings. And just to reiterate why we hope this and aspire for these trainings to be beneficial to your JCC and why you should send your staff to Houston or a future training, it's exceptional professional development for them, and regardless of their job. They'll gain skills that they can bring back to your JCC and community. Saying this before, we might deploy as an entire movement after a big event, after a natural disaster, but these skills can be helpful in aiding the daily crises that our members and our staff experience all the time. They'll gain the knowledge, skills, and abilities to advance readiness at your JCC so they can be prepared to respond to crisis, which will be our next conversation. It's a great way to build connections to other JCCs and JCC professionals. They'll be part of a really exciting cohort and they'll love the fact that they'll be connected just as you are being connected to today. They'll advance abilities to respond, respond to crisis and disaster in time of need and will be part of this wonderful group that is more than just wearing a blue t-shirt. They are part of something really special called J Responders. I want to give special gratitude to Joel Dinkin and the team at the Evelyn Rubenstein JCC in Houston, who will be hosting our first continental training experience, which has the capacity to have 30 JCC professionals attend in March. As you've known from the JCC exec emails that I've sent out, applications are available now. Um, many have already been submitted and we have room for more. And while we aspire and have confidence that we'll have a really strong group in Houston, and hope that you all apply, your, our staff among you apply. We will also be having additional training experiences later this year. As Daron mentioned earlier, we plan for at least three in 2020 in locations throughout the continent. So there's more opportunities to send staff if this particular time is not the best for your agency. The second of our major goals over the next two years will be to move the dial on readiness for each JCC. Each of our agencies today are likely at different levels of readiness, perhaps based on your potential risks, your resources, history, organizational culture. Our aim is that through our readiness initiative, each of your, each of your agencies can identify how can you be more ready than you are now and how you will respond to a crisis. Our areas of work will be in sharing best practices from both within and outside the movement, one of empowering our trained J responders to take the lead on readiness at their JCCs and to make best use of technology, both synchronous and asynchronous learning, to share resources, have dialogue, and build skills. And just to amplify what Daron said earlier, we hope to bring expertise to all of you through all the work that we'll be doing at the association, and we want to be facilitating conversations amongst all of you, knowing that there's incredible wisdom in your room and your JCCs Best practices may already be happening in many of your JCCs. How can we work together to make sure they're happening in all of our JCCs? And continuing to learn, sadly we learn from every crisis that happens. So how do we make the most of those opportunities? Much will be part of this readiness initiative and they will include but not be limited to the following categories. Developing important relationships in the community that can help us during a time of crisis 
creating the checklist that can help guide us when a crisis hits. Ensuring that we have the best communication strategies to make sure our staff and our membership and the people in the community are safe and the best means to make those communications happen. Certainly security is something that's much bigger than J-Response, but what is the role of security both before and also after a crisis to make sure we're doing our best to respond? Staff training, as I alluded to before. How do we pr protect our inventory and document our inventory? Um, I've had the experiences of sitting with Sue Fox and Arnie Perminger and Joel Dinkin who have told me that they are still dealing with insurance and FEMA all these many years later after Sandy and after Harvey. How, how can we help all of us to make sure that we have all the documentation that we need to make sure things are on the cloud and in print so when those crisis hits, we are in the best possible scenario to recoup what we can recoup and replace what we can replace. Um, the seven to 10 days recommendation is an example. Do we have the food and water and supplies in case that we have people at our JCCs or people in their homes that must be stuck in their homes for many more days than they would like? And how do we make sure that we help you create a local J response team in addition to whatever we might deploy? So given your individual and collective experiences, I'd love to talk a few minutes to seek your wisdom that's in this room. At your tables, uh, we'll take the next few minutes to discuss the following questions. What are the most important areas of readiness that you think we should cover for you and your JCC? What have you learned from crises that you may have managed or experienced that can help inform the development of our readiness initiative? How might you want to get involved given your personal expertise and interests? These are big questions that I could have an hour-long conversation with each of you. Let's see what we can do at our tables in a few minutes. Our table facilitators will take notes, and then we'll hear a, a couple of uh, responses from the room, and then I'll be almost done. So if we can all come back together one more time. So the work of J-Response is about honoring it's about showing kavod to those that want to serve and showing kavod to those that have experienced crises and that we can help serve. Um, I want to honor your time and give you the full break between now and dinner. So instead of uh, hearing from some tables, um, I would love to make sure that all of the notes that we're taking at your readiness conversation are passed through to me so we can incorporate your ideas. And if you'd like to have a conversation with me, um, any time throughout this week to talk more about readiness or any of your ideas for J-Response. I would love to spend that time with you. I am not scheduled to speak in front of the whole group again, uh, at least the next couple of days, so let's find time to talk because I want to hear all of your ideas to make sure they're all incorporated. So, closing. We have learned a lot over the last two years, and I have certainly learned a lot in the last six months. And I'd like to offer that J-Response has accomplished a lot during this time. Yet, it will be in the next two years that J-Response will really take shape and help transform our movement. We aspire to have at least 200 professionals trained at our continental trainings. These professionals will be training their peers on the four, R, four R's of their JCCs and will be thinking also about regional models of training and a train-the-trainer model in order to accomplish, that, accomplish this. All JCCs, we want all of us to be engaging in the readiness practice and the practice of our four R's. That the four R's are what we all do and think about at each JCC every day. By the end of 2021, we hope to be in position to consider our next phases, training members of our community, thinking about how we can share our expertise beyond the movement, and making sure that while we serve JCCs, we actually serve the broader Jewish community and the broader community. There are fantastic organizations doing this work of multiple faiths, of multiple practices, and we want to be at that table to serve them and to learn from them. We're starting that now, and we hope to do even more of that as we grow. So on this last slide, I offer the following questions for you to consider. This is also in your app, by the way, so if you only have a minute to read it, that's okay. Um, that I shared with our staff when I presented this last month and the JCC Association Board presenting just a couple of weeks ago as a standing invitation to share with us your reflections, questions, and suggestions. 
I so appreciate the support and enthusiasm from all of you, our execs, in the growth and development of J-Response, and look forward to partnering with you on these efforts in the years ahead. Tadarabha.